In this video, what we're going to learn to do is we're going to learn to identify if this particular election has what's called a Condorcet candidate. A Condorcet candidate, a lot of times, um, what they refer to it, candidate, there we go. Um, a lot of times, when we're talking about a Condorcet candidate, what we're looking for, sometimes they call this the most popular um, the most popular candidate. Now, unlike the plurality winner or the plural the, the the candidate that has the most number of votes, um, when we're talking about the Condorcet candidate, what we're talking about is we're talking about looking at each particular candidate compared to each other candidate. So, for example, if I would like to see how X and Y compare to each other, just if we were just talking about X and Y. Now, right now, what we have is we have this preference ballot, and we're able to see how X, Y, and Z all compare. But what we'd like to do is just look at a one-on-one -on -one race and see how do they do. The book doesn't do a very good job of explaining how to figure out if there's a Condorcet candidate or not. So let me walk you through the process. The basic idea, if you're looking for a Condorcet candidate, is to first start out with a one-on-one -on -one matchup. I like to try to be very methodical about this. Um, so in this case, I'm doing X versus Y. And I'm just looking at those two because they're in alphabetical order, so it keeps it easy for me. So if I want to look at X, candidate X compared to candidate Y, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at each column, and I'm going to see is X or Y higher ranked in that column, and then I'm going to give all the votes to whoever has the highest ranking. So for example, when I look at this column here for column these 17 votes, notice that X is in first place and Y is in second place. So X is going to win those 17 votes. Now I look at this six column. Notice that Z gets the first place votes, but I don't care about Z. What I'm looking at now is how do X and Y compare to each other. Well, when I look at this, Y was in second place and X was in third place. So comparing here, Y shows up higher on my chart. So Y is the winner of these six candidates' votes when I'm comparing just Y up against X. Now I go to the next column. Again, I'm just looking at X and Y. Y is in first place and X is in third place. So Y is definitely the winner for those 13 votes. And again, when I come to this next column, Y is ranked higher than X here. So when I'm looking at just X versus Y, X wins the 17 votes in the first column, but Y wins all of the other candidates' votes, which is 19 plus 3, which is 22. And so if I were just trying to see between X and Y who's the most popular, I would definitely say that Y is the most popular candidate between the two in that one-on-one -on -one matchup, even though X if you remember, we did this one in the this same election in the plurality video. X is the winner of the plurality because it has 17 votes, which is more than Y's 16 votes. However, just looking at X and Y without taking Z into consideration, Y is the um, more popular of the candidates. So you can say here what we're going to do is we can say if we're looking for a Condorcet candidate, we can now definitely say that it's not X because X lost an election. Um, in order to be the Condorcet candidate, every one-on-one -on -one matchup has to be won. So in this case, I did X versus Y. X lost, so X cannot be the Condorcet candidate. In this particular case, Y is um, why won this one-on-one -on -one matchup? What we need to do now is we need to see, well, why looks like it might be in the running here to be the Condorcet candidate. So let's look at how Y and Z match up. Now we're just going to go back to this table all over again, and I'm going to do the same thing. Only what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to compare Y and Z this time. In this first column, once we take X out of consideration, again, all we're looking at, just Y and Z. Y is ranked higher, so Y gets those 17 votes. When I go to the next one here, for these six votes, I'm looking at Y and Z. Z is higher for the six votes of this one, so Z takes those votes. When I come here, I'm comparing Y and Z again. Y is higher ranked, so Y takes those 13 votes. And then when I come over here, again, comparing Y and Z, Y is ranked higher, so Y takes these three votes. Now in this case, doing a one-on-one -on -one matchup, notice that Y walks away with 33 votes compared to Z's six. So Y is the winner of the one-on-one -on -one match between Y and Z. So again, Z lost this, so it's not Z. We can eliminate them from the running. And 
we did in fact see that y won both of the matchups that it was involved in. So in this case, yes, there's a Condorcet candidate, and that candidate is um, candidate y in this particular case. Now, um, not all elections have Condorcet candidates. Uh, let's see if we can look at an example here um, of something that, and let's do a test here to see if there's a Condorcet candidate. Here we're looking at um, voters A, B, and C. So what we're trying to look out for first is let's look at A versus B and see if there's a candidate between them. Um, comparing A and B in this column, 15 votes are going to go to A because A is number one. Here, six votes are going to go to B to A again because A is ranked above B. When we go to this one, comparing A and B, B is in first place with A in last place, so those 13 votes go to B. And when we compare A versus B here, three votes go to candidate um, B in this case. When I look at these rankings, A has 21 votes, B has 16 votes, and so, so far, in terms of who is my Condorcet candidate, I know it's not B because B lost the election. All right, A looks like it's pretty good in the running, so let's see who else A can match up against. Let's look at what happens between candidate A and candidate C. When I look here, I start out in this first column, looking at candidate A versus C. A has those 15 votes, so that works. When I look here at A versus C, C has the six votes for this one. When I come to the next one, again, A versus C, C is ranked above A because it comes first in the column. So C is going to walk away with those 13 votes. And when I come to the last column here of A versus C, A is higher ranked than C and gets three votes. Now when I do this one, A had 18 votes and C had 19 votes. So in this case, for the A versus C matchup, a lost. So our Condorcet candidate is not candidate A either um, because they lo a, a lost a matchup between A and C. So the last thing that we need to consider, well, we know it's not B, we know it's not A, so could it be candidate C? Well, C won against A, but what we haven't checked yet is how um, B and C match up. So let's look at how B and C compare in this election. For this first column of 15 votes, B is above C, so B gets the 15 votes. When I go to the next column, B against C, C's in first place, so C wins those six. In the next, can in the next um, column, B against C, B is ahead of C and wins the 13 votes. And when I compare B to C in the last column, B is ahead and gets those three votes. So when I add these totals up, I get um, 31 votes in A and just six in C. And so B is the clear winner against C in that one-on-one -on -one matchup, um, which means that C lost the election, so our Condorcet candidate cannot be C either. Um, this happens all the time, uh, but you need to you do need to check um, when it is asking you to look for a Condorcet candidate is, for example, here, did a win against both B and C? Nope, K A only won against one of them. Did B win against both A and B? Nope, because B won this election but lost this election. And then same thing with C. C won one election in a one-on-one -on -one matchup but lost the other one in the other one-on-one -on -one matchup. So in this particular case, we do not have a Condorcet candidate. So um, you have a couple of problems where they're asking you to decide, is there a Condorcet candidate in the election? If there is, all you're doing is you're just going to go and look at those at candidates, each, com each set of candidates two at a time. Um, so just A versus B, just ignore the other one in the column, and we're just looking in each column who's ranked higher. Um, and if somebody wins all the elections against the other one, then they would be a Condorcet candidate. So in this one, there is no Condorcet candidate. Why do we even care? Um, well, the reason is that the, it seems like if some, if there is a most popular candidate, for example, if you did a one-on-one -on -one matchup of A against B and a one-on-one -on -one matchup of A against C and A always won, well, it seems like they're the most popular because they won against each candidate individually. And yet at the end of the day, 
it's possible that that person didn't actually win the election. If we go back um, here and look at this XYZ one that we did, right? Y was the most popular candidate one-on-one, -on -one, but X won the election if we were doing plurality. That's a problem with the plurality method, is the fact that this can happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but the fact that it even might happen means that this is a flawed system. Plurality is a great system because it's easy, right? Um, first place votes, count them all up, whoever has the most wins. But at the end of the day, we end up with some really unfair situations like this, um, where the more popular candidate maybe didn't get all the first place votes. Um, this was a really big deal. For example, I think the book goes into um, one of the more recent elections where like Ralph Nader kind of split the vote out a little bit and allowed someone else to get the most first place votes, even though that wasn't the candidate that it would have won in one-on-one -on -one elections in terms of who was the preferred candidate. Um, so it's definitely um, a hot topic, especially um, with 2012 being another election year. These sorts of issues do come up. Um, and this idea of a Condorcet candidate being a fair winner uh, becomes, becomes an issue when we're looking at our different voting theory. So anyway, try the couple of problems where you're looking to decide if there's a Condorcet candidate or not. Do your little matchups and come on back and we will learn about another um, voting method with hopes that it might fix some of these problems that we get with this um, Condorcet candidate issue.